All right, next up to talk about State of the Valley Water, we have Jerry De La Piedra. He's the former water supply and conservation manager and now assistant officer of water supply utility in Valley Water. Thank you, Brian. And uh, good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see all of you here today. Um, this is our fourth annual summit, and these summits have been very valuable to the district in bringing all of you together sharing ideas and concepts and thoughts and how we can do better in terms of meeting our long-term goals of water use efficiency. So thank you all for being here again today. I would think this is a very valuable workshop or um, summit for us. Again, I'm Jerry Dale Piedra. I'm the Assistant Officer for the Water Supply Division here at the District. Uh, one of the key things that we do here at the District is try to make sure we have a reliable water supply. Not only for the current year, but also looking out well into the future. As uh, both of our directors alluded to, droughts. Droughts, of course, are our greatest challenge. Um, you can see in the chart here that this last drought, the 2012 to 2016 time period, was a real doozy for us. I mean, it was a historic drought for many reasons. Both in terms of precipitation over that five-year period was obviously very low, but then when you combine that with record high temperatures, it's not a great combination. So uh, it was a challenge for us, but we came together, the community, the water districts, the water agencies, the landscape sector, we all came together and really got through that drought together. Uh, we saw savings of 27, 28% during the middle of the drought. Couldn't have done that with all of you, so thank you very much. Uh, in terms of what we're looking at this year, um, as the directors alluded to, things are looking a little bit better. We have gotten a lot of rain. Uh, 17 was a very wet year. Obviously this year so far, we've seen a lot of rain. The map in California on the bottom left there you can see most of it's white, which is normal conditions um, based on this map. Um, the rest of it's, most of it is yellow, which is dry conditions. If I were to show this map in the middle of the drought, 2014, 2015, it would be all red or dark red for either extreme or exceptional drought conditions. So things have improved a little bit. Um, you can see the, there's a lot of squiggly lines on the chart on the right, but the circle in the middle is kind of showing how we're tracking so far. And this was actually a few weeks ago, so it's a little bit outdated. But about average year or above average year so far. Um, speaking of hydrology, uh, the green bars on the left there are both statewide conditions and local conditions are all at or above average for this time of year. Snow water equivalent, northern Sierra precipitation, and then local rainfall again, all above average so far this year. With the caveat, we're still early, things could change, but so far a good start. Reservoirs as well, statewide and locally, are in good shape. Um, seem all except for Oroville are above average for this time of year. Oroville, they're still working through some issues with uh, the, um, the repairs that they had to do, so they're purposely not filling it yet. Uh, I mentioned savings, 27, 28% during the middle of the drought. We're still seeing that savings today. Um, the bottom right there where the circle is, this is 2018 and we saw 20% 20, 20 savings from the community. Uh, this is compared to 2013, which is our base year, and this doesn't include growth. So we've had five years of growth, population, jobs, economy, et cetera. When you factor that in, it's actually more like 24, 25%. So again, the community is still out there making conservation a way of life and not reverting back to their old behaviors, which is a good thing. So in terms of 2019 so far, again, it is early, things could change, um, but you can see the photos there that just in the change in the snowpack from this year to last year, we're already seeing a big difference. Um, now this is important to us here in Santa Clara County because over half of our supply originates as snow up in the Sierras. The two main projects are the state water project, which is obviously operated by the state, and then the federal project, which is the Central Valley Project, or CVP. We have allocations, or we have contracts um, to get water from both those, projects. Each year at the beginning of the year, they release initial allocations and then as they get more information through the winter months, they update those as they go. And typically in April, May is when we get our final allocation. And we were planning throughout the year updating our updates locally as well based on these allocations that we're getting. Um, the initial state allocation was actually only about 10-15%. It's since gone up. It's now you can see 35%. Um, for the federal or the CDP, uh, they just released their first allocation just a week or so ago. Um, there's multiple parts to it, but um, the main part for us is 75% of our MNI or municipal and industrial allocation, which is essentially the urban side versus the ag side. So 75% of our allocation um, for, again, the initial allocation. 
Uh, we also have water stored um, down in Semi-Tropic, which is a groundwater bank down in Central Valley. And so what we do is we take our, any excess water that we have that we can't use locally, and we send it down there and we bank it down there. So for when times when we need it, such as during the middle of the drought, and we, use, and we bring that, we don't actually bring that water back, we do an exchange, but it's available to us for when we need it. It's a little outdated, 250,000 acre feet. It's actually, we're up to a little over 300,000 acre feet stored down there now. Our capacity is 350, so we're, we have a, a fair amount stored down there as well. And then for us, we're first and foremost, we're a groundwater management agency. We um, protect the groundwater basins here in Santa Clara County, and that's our main local reservoir. It's more than all of our surface water reservoirs combined. We have more in the groundwater. Um, we also use that as the trigger for our water shortage contingency plan. So what we do is we take these initial imported water allocations, we look at demands, and we say, well, how much groundwater we can have at the end of the year? Based on that, we can make a recommendation for our board is what the call for reduction should be. For comparison or for reference, you can see the color chart on the right. In 2015, the middle of the drought, our projection was our groundwater basins were going to drop to 160, 165,000 acre feet. As you can see, it's right you know, down in the orange, kind of near the bottom of the orange, too. And so almost getting to that red. So our board called for the 30%, recommended mandatory measures, and the community really responded. That's when we got to 27, 28%. Um, so that was a really good thing. Eventually, groundwater uh, levels have recovered. And our current projection, again, it is early, uh, but our current projection is we're probably going to end 2019 in the normal stage, probably around 350,000 acre feet. Um, however, that being said, as the chair mentioned, we're still calling for a 20% reduction in water use. Um, we went through this historic five-year drought period. 2017 was a wet year. 2018 was actually below average, but 2017 was so wet that we had a lot of carryover into 2018 that got us through 2018. 2019, we're off to a good start, but we don't know. Maybe the next four or five years are going to be another historic drought. Plus, we also don't want to start transitioning now to making conservation a way of life. We're looking for permanent, long-term water use efficiency savings. Um, the chair alluded to as well, the state is making that transition. They, a couple of years ago, they've adopted two bills um, to make conservation in California a way of life. They have multiple components to these bills, but the main component is that water retailers, such as San Jose Water Company, City of Morgan Hill, City of Santa Clara, they're going to be required to establish a water budget. So similar to how you calculate a water budget for landscape, you turf, trees, shrubs, water feature, add them all up, and here's the water budget for the site. Retailers are going to have to do that for their service area. But instead of breaking it down in those categories, you're going to have residential indoor, residential outdoor, commercial outdoor on a dedicated landscape meter, and then water loss. So add those all up, and that's their water budget for their service area. Then they're going to have to meet that water budget, and if they're not meeting it, they're going to have to implement various programs or take various actions to get under budget. Um, the state is currently working on the methodology on how to figure all this out, and it's probably going to take a few years. I don't think the retailers have to start reporting to the state until 2023, if I remember correctly. I also want to talk a little bit about since the last summit, we've made a lot of changes, um, new programs, adjusted our programs, many of it based on feedback that we received from all of you. So again, thank you for that feedback and keep it coming. In terms of education and outreach, uh, we have there's a great website out there. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend that you visit it. It has a lot of good information on it. Uh, SouthBayGreenGardens.org. Uh, Karen Coppick, <laughs> our own staff, was overseeing it for many months, years. <laughs> uh, two years. So we're one of the agencies that participates and contributes to this website. Again, a lot of good information on this website. I re highly recommend you visit it and share it with your clients. We also have a program where we have literature out in the various nurseries and supply stores throughout the county, both our educational materials as well as our program information. And so if you have any uh, sites that you're aware of that you think would be good to have, please contact us and we'll add, add that to our list. We have a new program that we're kicking off this year with Ecology Action, uh, our Great Water Direct Install Program. And in order to move that program forward, um, we're, get, we're gonna kick off a Great Water contractor, contractor Training next month. So we did some research on our Great Water land, Laundry Landscape Program and why we're not seeing more participation. And one of the hurdles that we found is that people don't know where to start and they don't have the technical expertise to do it. And they can't find anybody to help them. And so the idea is, well, let's offer this training. Let's start certifying people that can then help these people make the conversion or do the upgrade. And so not only are these certified contractors going to do the direct install program, but they're also available for our rebate program. So people that still want to go through our laundry landscape rebate program, 
now we'll have a certified list of people that they can contact to, to assist them. Um, just to remind our rebate is $200 for laundry landscape gray water systems, and it is double in certain areas. City of Catino, it's actually $400, and parts of San Jose, it's $400. We also, as of January 1st, we have a new addition to our, our landscape rebate program. We now offer rebates for rainwater catchment. We have rebates for rain barrels, $35 a barrel, for cisterns, 50 cents per gallon, and then also for rain gardens, it's a dollar a square foot per, surface, per roof area, surface area. So uh, again, as of January 1st, these are now available, and we've had a pretty good response so far of people that are interested. We also did some research. We wanted to find out, we've been spending tens of millions of dollars, especially during the drought, a lot of money that we put into our landscape rebate program to assist the public and be more efficient. So we wanted to find out, and we wanted to ensure that we are receiving a benefit for all that money that we're, we're paying out. So we did a study, and we looked at lawn conversion, smart controllers, and some of our irrigation equipment. To find out exactly how much savings we're achieving through these programs. And for those that are interested, it's available on our website. Um, and you can also call staff and have to answer any questions you might have. Uh, finally, we also have a video series that we've been working on. The idea is that these are water-wise videos that are specific to landscape, and we've been working through our landscape committee. Another reason to join our landscape committee is you can be featured in one of these videos. Um, and I'm going to play one of them right now. Oh, if I can make this work. They're about a minute long, and they typically include tips on how to be more efficient. Hi, my name is Brian Boyer, and I'm the golf course superintendent at Santa Barbara Hills Golf Club. I also serve as the chair of the landscape committee for the Santa Clara Valley Water District. Having saved over 25% of our 2013 water usage, water wise turf management is a way of life for us. My top water wise management tips are run your sprinklers as early as the day break as possible when the wind is low and you'll have moisture in the soil for the heat of the day. Two, since you won't be awake most likely, audit your system weekly. Dry spots don't happen naturally in patterns. And three, manage your plant through your soil with the use of calcium and organic soil release nitrogen fertilizers, which are best applied after aeration. For more water wise turf management tips, Visit www.valleywater.org. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> okay, uh, the last thing I want to mention, we have two programs, one we kicked off last year and one we're about to kick off. Um, first one is a landscape maintenance consultation program. The idea is, again, we spent tens of millions of dollars, especially during the drought, on assisting the public convert their landscapes to a, a low water use landscape. The idea is that these types of landscapes are probably going to be new to a lot of people, and maybe they don't know necessarily how to maintain them. So let's provide some tips and a one-time service where we'll send an expert out to them, kind of go over their landscape, what they have, and how to maintain that landscape. we we'll leave them with a nice checklist of things to consider. Um, so again, it's a free program that we offer. It's actually the idea of our chair, um, and so we ran with that idea. And it's been very popular, in fact, more popular than we originally thought. Uh, and then the other program is a landscape design assistance program. Uh, again, we did some research. One of the, uh, the hurdles that we found is people don't know where to start, or they get overwhelmed, and don't they sign up for the program, but don't necessarily complete it. And so one of the things we found is if we offer assistance in terms of design assistance, that may get them over that initial hurdle. So again, um, it's something that we're about to kick off. We're hoping to kick off soon. Um, in fact, both these programs are about to be released a request for a proposal so um, to hire a contractor to help us implement these two programs. So if anybody's interested in bidding on either one of these programs or both, please contact us and we'll add you to the mailing list. And so that was all I had. The one thing I did want to close with is that uh, for people that know me, work with me, I'm very big on bringing people together and working as a team, whether it be my internal team here at the district or working with stakeholders. I really believe that if we come together as a team, we're stronger and we can get more done. So again, I really appreciate all of you being here and I look forward to continuing to work with all of you to meet our goals moving forward. Questions? Got time. We've got time for questions. He's the expert. Well, if you think of one, we'll have a mic and get it to you. 
And uh, thanks for playing that video. I get a quarter every time somebody clicks on that. <laughs> Just kidding.